live from Stambaugh Stadium and Dyke Beatty Field on the campus of Youngstown State University. We present the 2017 home opener of the Youngstown State Penguins against neighborhood rival Robert Morris, the Colonials. Hi everyone, I'm Jim Campbell with Dre Smith to have the call for you. And Dre coming into week two this season, both these teams have cause for encouragement looking ahead. Robert Morris first. Absolutely, Jim. You know, they come in with their first opening win since 2008 and their first win over a traditionally good Dayton team since 2000 in a 13-10 win last week. And then you have to be excited about where you're at if you're John Banasek, and today's a good measuring stick. Now, it's easy to be encouraged after a win. The Penguins lost their opener at Pitt. What do they have to be encouraged about? Down 21-0 at halftime. They mounted a furious comeback to tie that FBS school, take it into overtime, and what was a you know, an impressive performance. So I think today another good measuring stick for them to see where they're at against Robert Morris. And their motto today is no let up. Play just like you were playing Pitt. Starting lineups and kickoff are next. Coming up. The Penguin Club supports your Youngstown State student athletes. Thanks to the Penguin Club, our student athletes are given the chance to win a championship and more importantly, earn a degree. Join the Penguin Club to support YSU and benefit from priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality suites. Be a part of the team behind the teams. Join the Penguin Club and make a difference. Call 330-9411-YSU or go to ysusports.com for more information. From all of us YSU grads. And future grads. Who work here at Sweeney. Go Penguins! Go Penguins! Sweeney. From all of us at Team Sweeney, Go Penguins! And Robert Morris Colonials won the opening toss and deferred, so the homestanding YSU Penguins will receive the football. On offense first with a unit that performed very well in the second half against Pitt last week. And uh, Tevin McCaster, a power running back, but look out for a guy that will be right behind him on the bench and will be one of the kickoff returners. Christian Turner, a true freshman who made a terrific debut last week. Offensive line played well. Jacob Zinni is a new starter there. Robert Morris on defense, like everywhere else, is very young, even more so on offense. Their kickoff guy is Nick Basilia. He's a true freshman out of the Pittsburgh area. It's Biseglia, and he has it in the air. We're underway. This is Christian Turner at the five. Check it. They did a little switch on us. And back there instead of Turner is Jake Cummings. True freshman out of Canfield with a nice return. Oh, Jim, this offense, YSU, you mentioned last week in the second half, the offensive line really started to wear on that pit front. I think you got a glimpse into what this football team can be up front. I want to see how they control this line of scrimmage. The offensive line for YSU got a lot of size, a lot of 300-pounders up front, and the defensive line for Robert Morris all under 270. So you think Youngstown State should have an advantage in the trenches. Hunter Wells under center, hit 18 of 32 passes, 311 yards, two touchdowns against Pitt, threw one interception, and that was in the end zone in overtime. Had he hit it, it could have created a tie and a second overtime session. Tevin McCaster, Jr., out of nearby Newcastle, 5'10", 195, rushed for 73 yards and a touchdown against Pitt. You saw that push up front on the first play for that offensive line. I know Shane Montgomery, the offensive coordinator, and head coach Bo Pelini, who you see there, they want to establish this ground game. You saw this offense open up last week when they were able to finally start running the football and able to lead to some play-action passes down the field as well. Second and four after McCaster's six-yard pickup. Slot right formation, wing left, single setback. Wingman in motion is tight end Shane Kuhn. Hunter Wells wants to load it up, fires to the near side, wide open. He's got Chris Durkin, a homegrown product. 
from Ursuline, who has transferred back to Youngstown. And Robert Morris had no idea where he was until it was too late, and Hunter Wells found him. We were talking about that play action pass. You see it here. You get some of the Robert Morris defenders uh, to come up in the box a little bit. Hunter Wells stays in there, makes a nice throw down the field to Durkin. And Durkin's a guy, Jim, that had a great camp. You know, the Virginia Tech transfer, he is an athletic kid who started out as a quarterback at Virginia Tech, uh, but with you know, his size and ability, able to move to tight end. And along with Kevin Rader, he's a weapon for this YSU offense. Played quarterback in high school at uh, Ursuline High School, which is just literally up the street from this stadium. In fact, Ursuline, for those of you who are not familiar with Youngstown or the pro high school programs here, Ursuline plays its home games in this stadium. This is Tevin McCaster weaving his way into the second and third levels and down to the 11-yard line. And we saw right there a gaping hole for McCaster to run through. Great job by that offensive line of YSU. This is, you know, a group that's played a lot of football together. The left side of that line, Justin Spencer's a preseason All-American at left tackle. You have Gavin Wiggins at left guard, Vitas Horankowitz at center. Those guys played all of last year together. Uh, so they know how to open up the holes for McCaster. So he has gained 49 yards on his first two carries. Again, Shane Kuhn is going to be lined up as an up back, number 86 for Tevin McCaster. Damone Peterson is wide to the left. Alvin Bailey is wide right. McCaster gets it, almost lost the football. It was almost stripped, and a flag flies in at that point, holding actually a face mask call against YSU. So a first and 10 at the 12 will be blunted somewhat here in the early going. And this is what hurt YSU last week at Pitt. They really had some good drives in the first half of that game. They didn't score any points, but they moved the football. But it was the penalties, Jim, that really you know, halted those drives. They moved the football. They had success. They would get down into the red zone, and it would be a holding penalty you know, or an illegal formation that really stalled those drives. And I know that's not what the coaching staff for Youngstown State wants to see here early. Senior Cameron Fraser singled out as the culprit on that particular infraction. It takes the ball back to the 27-yard line and makes it first and 25. YSU has a... Uh, Pretty solid record, both in home openers and against visiting teams from the state of Pennsylvania. We'll catch up on those numbers as we go. Kevin Rader, tight end. He's the man in motion from the left wing to the right wing. Fake to McCaster. Hunter dumps it in underneath to Rader, who gets down inside the 20. Rader is the tight end who made the fabulous catch pinned up against the back of an Eastern Washington defender to score the winning touchdown in one of the FCS playoff games last year, in which YSU finished number two in the country, surprising a lot of folks. Raider, a talented tight end who can play more like a wide receiver at times, a 6'5", 200-pound guy who can really run you know, from his position. He had six catches for 100 yards last week at Pitt, so he's going to be one of Hunter Wells' main targets. Got 11 there. It's still second and long. Nate Mays in the game. Nate Mays is going to throw. Got the fade, leaping catch. There's a penalty flag down. A heck of a pack catch That there. was senior Damon Patterson, who had two catches last week. Did not get into the end zone. We'll see what the flag is. Good catch on Nate Mays being in the ball game. A sophomore. The Penguins have been high on him from the day, well, obviously before he came to campus or he wouldn't be here. <laughs> yeah, so they, but they like him a lot. There were some quarterback issues at the beginning of last season because of injuries and some performance issues. And Coach Pelini and Shane Montgomery, offensive coordinator, just kept saying how much they like Nathan Mays down the road. And they did get him some game time. So he's not, you know, he's not a rookie per se in absolutely. terms of game experience. Still not sure what the flag is here, but we're going to find out in a moment. In the play, hold. We're going to have offsetting penalties. Yeah. So penalties early, an issue for Youngstown State. Two big ones here. It takes a touchdown off the board. But you mentioned Nate Mays, Jim. He's a guy that really last year when he was on the field, you knew it was going to be a run play. He ran out of that wildcat read option formation, but you know, he's gotten a lot better over the offseason. And I know Shane Montgomery, the offensive coordinator, feels comfortable with him throwing the football now, You know, not just in those running scenarios. And you saw it there. They let him you know, throw one to the end zone. 
And that was a well-thrown fade because he put enough air under it that the defender couldn't get to it, even though he had good coverage. And Damone Patterson got way up to snag it and by all appearances got at least one foot down in the end zone. So the, the offsetting penalties take points potentially off the board. And it is second and 14 for the Penguins. Trying to get a look over to the sideline to see if Hunter Wells is, you know, if there's not an injury issue. Uh, it didn't seem like he didn't spot any injuries with him. But they did not run any of this last week with Mays. He really didn't play a whole lot at that in that pit game. So interesting here that he's in the ball game down here in the red zone. Single setback is Tevin McCaster, who has two big runs on this drive. Kevin Rader is lined up as the tight end right. Again, it is Patterson and Bailey. And Mays starts to pull out from center and winds up on his backside. This is week one stuff here. Yeah. YSU's uh, first game here at Stambaugh Stadium was back in 1982, and the Penguins are 28-6-1 in, in their first home game of the season since that time. The Penguins have won 18 straight home games in the month of September. That dates back to 2009. That penalty goes against Robert Morris. And the Penguins now are knocking on the door. They get a first down with that one at the four. Mays, McCaster, cut back, drives hard. He'll come up about a yard short. Strong run by McCaster. You know, last year, Jim, it was a good sign if Tevin McCaster got in the end zone for Youngstown State. This team was 8-1 and one in the nine games that he scored a touchdown. So he rushed for over 600 yards last year as one of the backup tailbacks. Really broke out in that Eastern Washington game that you mentioned. It had over 150 yards in that game. It really became you know, one of the main go-to options for this team, and he's going to carry the load this year. Shane Kuhn lines up at fullback. Extra blocker, presumably for McCaster. That's exactly right, and McCaster trips. Did he catch Nathan Mays as he went by? Because Shane Kuhn did his job. There was a huge lane for McCaster to run through, and he never got to it. Loss of a yard. It's third and goal from the three. Yeah, it looked to me like he just tripped over his own feet or got caught on the turf there. Didn't look like he got caught on anybody else, I don't think. Right this time, third and three, and the Penguins will go trips to the right. Bottom of your screen. Inside guy is Isaiah Scott, another homegrown product out of Hubbard. This is a situation where you can look for the quarterback run, and they like to run that read option play down here close to the end zone. Mays with a little audible throw all the way. Now rolls, scrambles, tucks it under as he is sacked back at the six-yard line. Good job by the Robert Morris defense. I got to be honest with you, Jim. It makes me wonder if there's not an injury or something wrong with Hunter Wells because you know, this is a situation where you think he'd be in the game. You see Nate Mays here rolling out. He's a, he can use his feet. He's a good runner, but a great job by the Robert Morris defense to keep him in the pocket there and get to him. Well, so what looked to be extremely promising for the Penguins in a couple of miscues and some penalties forces them to settle for three if they can get it. Another homegrown product who played his high school home games here, Zach Kennedy out of Cardinal Mooney, a junior. Missed his only field goal attempt at Pitt. This one sails through. And with 9.23 to go in the first quarter, Youngstown State has drawn first blood in its home opener and leads Robert Morris by a score of three to nothing. Kennedy, obviously, uh, throughout his high school career and so far in his time at YSU, has been a huge weapon. Absolutely. He did a great job his freshman year coming onto the scene when a lot of people didn't know what to expect. A true freshman kicker, you know, thrust into a big role, and he, he did a great job. Was a first team all Missouri Valley performer as a freshman. And, you know, last year set school records for field goals made and attempted. He was 19 of 29 last year after battling through some injuries. So you know, he's a real weapon for this team in the red zone. Uh, when you need to get points on the board, and he's a guy you can go to. And you saw their special teams coach, Ron Stoops, who's done a great job with his special teams in an area that you know, Bo Pelini takes very seriously. He's very active with them in practice and you know, really takes an active role in the special team. Such an important part of the game that gets overlooked. 
see what the flag is here. 61 yard drive in eight plays. If it, Penguins are getting ready to kick off, so, and they're getting ready to kick it off from the 35, so. It's like a personal foul against Robert Morris. Which means the Penguins would then get to kick off from the 50. Or not, they may have picked up the flag. You got to give Robert Morris a lot of credit on that defensive possession down there with the Penguins knocking on a door for them to be able to stand and hold like that and force a field goal. That's a win, you know, for them to hold the Penguins to three on the opening drive and stop that momentum from building if you get in with a touchdown. So, and Robert Morris is a team that you know, they struggled last year only two and nine, but they were in the top 30 in the FCS in seven different defensive categories. So this has been a team that's played a lot of good defense under head coach John Banasek in his fourth year. And they are still a young football team. And in fact, on offense, they had all five of last year's starting linemen returning. And they have five new starters this year. Absolutely. This is a young team. Four, I think four freshmen and a redshirt freshman. There's a lot of talent over there on that side of the ball. Linebacker Adam Wallet, another local product that played at Poland High School here in the area. So definitely some Youngstown connections between these two teams. And I know they're looking to make a big improvement this year. All right, Zach Kennedy will kick it off. Hangs up into a wind. Grabbed it about the 12 and across the 20. And then really thumped by the Penguins is return man Harrison Dreyer. Wow. Heck of a play there by the Penguins. That special team's flying around, as you'll see right here, just coming in with reckless abandon. Great play to get the ball loose. That's Christian Randall Posey, a linebacker who is a special teams monster, Jim. He is a guy who flies down on kick coverage, a big hitter, and he pries the ball loose there to get YSU the football. And it looked like Teray Bryant, the freshman linebacker from Lithonia, Georgia, was the one that hopped on it. So I know Ron Stoops is going to be happy about that one, making a big special teams play right on cue as we just talked about you know, how important that is. And you see it gets YSU an extra possession. Well, not a good way to start your uh, offensive day on the road when scoring points is a challenge at best. Now we're going to get a stoppage of play. We'll get a timeout from Robert That's Morris. That's our first charge timeout of the half. Robert Morris also be a media timeout. calls a timeout with 9.17 to go in the first quarter. And in a stop and go affair so far, it's Youngstown State 3, Robert Morris, nothing. Sweet. Youngstown State Founded in drive at the Robert Morris 23 after recovering a fumble on a kickoff return. And Nathan Mays remains at quarterback for the Penguins, the backup to Hunter Wells, who didn't make it through the first series. Mays on the option. Late pitch, almost fumbled. Tevin McCaster is going to be lucky to be back at the line of scrimmage. And we see the Robert Morris defense doing a great job there running to the football. We know with Mays in the game, the option is going to be part of the package, and yeah, that's got to be in the scouting report for the defense, and Robert Morris was ready for it there. No good. gain, second and ten. Good team speed by the Colonials. You know, as we mentioned, this defense... And they struggled last year, but, but this defense was solid most of the time. Offense was the main issue for this team a year ago, and this defense is holding their own so far. Two wide receivers to the bottom of the screen. The outside guy, Alvin Bailey, in motion to the slot. Mays, little swing pass to McCaster, grabbed behind the line of scrimmage and dragged down at the 28-yard line by inside linebacker Joseph Uatafe, a senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida. The senior linebacker showing his range there. He was second on this team last year with 81 total tackles, had three and a half sacks. So he's a guy that could do a lot for this team, a veteran who's been around, been in this system for a couple years. And he really read that play out, saw it coming from the start. And we going to see Christian Turner come in the game here. The freshman running back who was electric out of the backfield receiving the ball at Pitt last week. 124 yards rushing on five, or receiving on five catches, scored two touchdowns. Third and 15, Mays looks left all the way, 
Under pressure, throws wide open and making the catch as he goes to the turf. Alvin Bailey at the 10, first down Penguins. Great job by Bailey to keep his composure there. He slipped and was on the ground, was able to get his head up and make a play as the ball was right on him after he fell down. And a good throw by Mays, hanging in, some pressure coming, but he stays in the pocket, makes a good strong throw. And Alvin Bailey, one of the go-to guys for the Penguins on these third downs. He's such a reliable guy to go to in big situations. His fifth catch of the young season. First and 10 at the 10, just inside the 10. McCaster can't stiff arm his way away from the Robert Morris defender, who was a guy not on their depth chart. Kirby Ames, a true freshman out of Alden, Pennsylvania. And right now, I talked about at the beginning of the game how important it would be you know, how did the line of scrimmage fare? You know, how did Robert Morris do against this big YSU offensive line? And they're really holding their own. I mean, they're not getting pushed off the ball. You know, they're getting in the backfield, making plays for you know, tackles for loss. So you got to be impressed with the way this undersized front has held up so far for Robert Morris. You got a no gain and two tackles for loss out of the four plays on this possession. Mays to throw. Looks right, rifles it in front of a defender incomplete. Pass intended for Isaiah Scott. That's a great play there by Taval Brown, the sophomore corner, you know, in coverage against a talented receiver in Damone Patterson, and he was all over him, got a hand up, made a play. This is a defense that right now doesn't look afraid of this offense either. You know, This is a game that obviously most people are going to expect Youngstown State to come in and dominate, but Robert Morris doesn't look like a team that looks intimidated you know, or afraid of the moment. They came to play. So it is third and goal from the 13. Trips left, and it is Damone Patterson split right. Takes the snap, does Mays, looks left, and throws it off the fingertips of Christian Turner, incomplete. And so for the second time, the Penguins get down inside the 10-yard line and can't stick it in the end zone, at least not without a penalty. Now, this is really the first time yeah, other than a couple times last year where Nate Mays is really running the show himself. He came into that game last year against Northern Iowa and played a lot of that second half, but he really just handed the ball off. Didn't do a lot of throwing. You know, this is one of the first times he's been in charge of this offense and had to really run the show. So, you know, I'm sure there's some jitters there and, you know, some getting comfortable that Nate Mays will have to do. Zach Kennedy will attempt his second field goal of the quarter. Slams it hard and through. So the Penguins have doubled their lead here on the 30-yard field goal by Zach Kennedy with 6.23 to go in the first period. It's now Youngstown State 6, Robert Morris nothing. Youngstown State now leads Robert Morris 6 to nothing. The 30-yard field goal by Zach Kennedy completed a 10-play or a 10-yard, rather, seven-play drive. Took two minutes and 54 seconds. It was a drive in which the Robert Morris defense, after its special teams, had coughed up a kickoff at the 23-yard line. Played very well. And now the offense is hopeful of getting its first touch of the afternoon. And fortunate only to be down 6-0. Zach Kennedy kind of mishit that. Bounced up and taken at the 18-yard line. And rumbling out of traffic, T.J. Neal, a sophomore running back. And you got to be frustrated if you're Robert Morris, who's already you know, down to six minutes left in the first quarter, and you haven't even got your offense on the field yet. So. Now we'll get our first look at this Colonial offense. There you go, and you can see that front line is dominated by freshmen, and their quarterback, Jimmy Walker is a San Diego State transfer. Walker, a guy that also spent some time at Cerritos College in California, He's one of the school's most prolific passers. Handoff on first down. And that is Cole Blake, redshirt junior running back. Let's look at the YSU defense. New defensive ends this year after losing two guys that went to the NFL, but. I know the Penguins are very happy with Faison Chapman and Lou Jean. Yeah, 
different ends, but you know, they bring a different skill set, but talented athletic kids who they feel like you know, can step in admirably for Derek Rivers and Avery Moss, who have moved on to the NFL. After a four-yard gain, the throw short and dropped. Good job by Billy Nico Hurst, the corner there for YSU, getting a hand in as the Robert Morris receiver went to make a play and forcing the ball out. Nico Hurst, a guy that played at safety last year as a backup in the playoffs, and they moved him to corner this season, one of their main cornerbacks. So he's a versatile guy in that secondary. He's had experience. They rely on him for a lot of different roles back there. Taven Allison, a redshirt freshman from Detroit who caught two passes against Dayton, coughed that one up. So it is third and six for the Colonials. Staring into the sun with the wind at their back. Roll out, throw, good catch on the far sideline. Tim Vecchio, who caught a couple of passes last week. He's a sophomore, played at Penn Trafford in the uh, suburban Pittsburgh area. First down, Robert Morris. Vecchio led them in receiving last year, 35 catches, 308 yards, and a good job by Walker there. You know, he could have ran, had a window to maybe step up and run, but you know, kept his composure, kept his eyes downfield, and found an open receiver for the first down. And Jimmy Walker's a talented quarterback. You know, he led them to that victory last year, and a guy that's had success you know, at some other schools, so he really brings some stability and some downfield passing attack to this offense. Yep. Not sure why there wasn't a flag running back on a very early start that time. On the carry for no gain is Cole Blake. Jimmy Walker, uh, last week against Dayton, hit just under half his passes, 14 for 29 for 198 yards. He got one into the end zone and had one picked off. The touchdown pass was a 72-yard effort. One-yard gain is the official call on that. that Second and nine. Great play by Kyle Hedges there, the Lakewood St. Ed's product from Cleveland who's really turned into one of the starting safeties for this YSU team. He'll come up at the line of scrimmage as well as playing coverage. So, you know, a versatile guy back there. Triangle formation of receivers to the right. Play goes to the left with Cole Blake again carrying the football and pulled down after crossing into Penguins territory. A little bit of a misdirection formation there for the Colonials. Did a good job. You know, get the motion moving one way, hit the run play back the other. And, did a good job catching the Penguins off guard a little bit, but a good tackle again by Hedges to come up and make a sure play to stop him before it became a real big gain down the field. Third and three, Robert Morris rushed for 122 yards as a team against Dayton last week. Piled up 320 yards in total team offense. Two receivers to each side. And Jimmy Walker alone in the backfield. Now he will get some company. Drops to throw, and Dreyer, the freshman, gets it and steps out of bounds. He's the guy that dropped back out of a slot into the backfield. And a good job by Walker of just taking what the defense gives him. You don't have to force it down the field and turn the ball over. Just you know, it's third and three, know your, your yardage and your distance, and take it underneath, get the first down, and keep the chains moving. At the Youngstown State 44-yard line. Leading receiver Tim Vecchio by himself. Man-on-man -man coverage at the top of your screen. Walker, slant, miss. That had to be miscommunication. Somebody didn't run the right route there because Walker knew what he wanted to do with it. Tight end Reggie Green was in the area, but it didn't seem, unless, again, he ran the wrong route, it didn't seem like he was the primary target and Vecchio was breaking down the far sideline, so the ball would have been short for him. Yeah, I was looking for Reggie Green there, who's a talented tight end, 6'3", Pittsburgh transfer. Had a couple catches for 43 yards last week, so he'll be a guy that you know, Walker will look to, try and create some mismatches. Offset tandem receivers to the right this time. Little delay handoff to Dreyer, breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage, and hustles down to about the 39-yard line. Not bad for a guy who wasn't listed on their 2 deep. Yeah, heck of a move there. A little shimmy move, little jump cut. Made a YSU defender miss and gets positive yards. So Robert Morris has to be happy with the way they're moving the football on this first drive. Third down five at the YSU, 39. Third downs, this is where this team struggled. And they converted only 15% of their third downs a year ago on offense. So this is a place that you know the Colonials are looking to get better and more efficient. Dreyer in motion. 
Walker, the rush is coming. They hold it off on a good hit on the pass, near pass reception by Taven Allison. He was greeted rudely by Lee Wright, senior linebacker. Lee Wright, one of the best linebackers in the Missouri Valley Football Conference, maybe in the country. No one, you know, not many guys run as good from sideline to sideline and play the run as well as Lee Wright. He's really a linebacker that does it all, has really had to step in and be a leader for this defense this year with Rivers and Moss and other guys moving on. So he's going to be a guy they count on to be all over the field. Adam Check is the punter. Averaged a little over 38 yards a kick. Hangs it up, end over end, hits just beyond the goal line, so that is a touchback. He, even if he had gotten the reverse spin on that, it would have been a touchback. Timeout on the field with 2.06 to go. In the first quarter, it remains Youngstown State 6, Robert Morris. Oh, boy. Bob, your burrito is sparking. Bob. Get a dollar-for-dollar dollar match of all the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year, automatically. Where'd you go, Bob? Yo, Miss Mitchell, your boy just won the Super Bowl. Dominate from day one and win it all with the new arcade playstyle. Madden NFL 18, rated E for everyone. Get the ultimate experience on Xbox One. Sophomore Nathan Mays, number seven, remains at quarterback for Youngstown State on its third possession of the ball game. And right after this first play, we'll give an update on the condition of the guy he replaced in the first series, Hunter Wells. A little bit of a low snap. Tevin McCaster there to take it, but the Robert Morris defense, again, alert and sure tackling buries McCaster. What do we know about Hunter Wells? Well, it seems like uh, we've got an update from down in the field. It looks like he is definitely some type of injury, maybe in a sling, not exactly sure. You know, can't confirm exactly what the injury is, but it doesn't look good if they've got him slinged up on the sideline already, so we probably won't see him the rest of the way. No gain, Mays rolls out, there's a hold on the tight end, throw to Alvin Bailey, wide open underneath at the 35 and steps out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Alvin Bailey again, he's gonna be a guy that Nate Mays looks for. Bailey had over you know, 500 yards receiving last year, a go-to guy for this offense and you know, the Florida transfer, a talented kid who knows how to get open down the field and he's been a, a, you know, a guy that Nate Mays has looked to here early in this ball game. First and 10 at the 45. Two receivers to the top of your screen, one at the bottom. Kevin Rader, the wingman, delay handoff. This is McCaster, got a hole right up the middle behind veteran, the Penguins veteran center, Vitas Horankowicz, and he picks up six. So we got a player down for Robert Morris. Slow to get up, contact was pretty heavy there at the point of attack. Ooh. Got his bell rung pretty good. I think that's Drew, is it Drew Allen, number three? I think you're right. Cornerback. He's a local product, actually. He's from nearby Newcastle. And he looks like he got, he's yeah. not doing well to get his balance. So hopefully the medical staff will take care of him. And obviously know the climate of football you know, nowadays, the head injuries and how careful they are about those kind of things. So certainly wish him the best because it looks like he needs to be back in this ball game, that's for sure. Not any time soon. We saw Youngstown State finally get a little bit of a push there offensively, you know, up front in the run game. Robert Morris has done a tremendous job of, you know, holding the run game back for YSU and what we thought would be, you know, an advantage for the Penguins running the football downhill against a smaller front of the Colonials. But I have to give them credit. They've held up nicely so far. Mays from under center this time. Another handoff, and again, Robert Morris has it sniffed out, and Tevin McCaster, check it, that was not, yes it was, had no place to go, and loses three. It's off that right side of the line, having a hard time getting anything going over there. You have two new starters on the right side for YSU. Cam Frazier at right tackle is a guy who's played a lot of football, but this is his first time as a full-time starter at right tackle, and Jake Zinni at right guard, this is his first action of his career. You know, last week was his first starter you know, in his career. So those are guys that, you know, are very early in terms of their experience at those positions. 
Third and seven, Robert Morris leaves the middle wide open on its front this time. I believe Christian Turner has checked in at running back. Again, a dangerous pass receiver. He's going to catch the screen underneath. First down, despite an excellent open field tackle from behind by Gerald Ferguson. Christian Turner, last week he was the, the star of the game for the Penguins. Five catches over 100 yards, as you mentioned earlier. And he's a guy that can do it all. Talented runner from Cincinnati LaSalle, but he can beat you out of the backfield receiving, as we saw last week. So, you know, big play there to convert a third down. And that was the final play of the first quarter, mostly dominated by Youngstown State, which leads six to nothing. The Penguin Club supports your Youngstown State student-athletes. Thanks to the Penguin Club, our student-athletes are given the chance to win a championship and, more importantly, earn a degree. Join the Penguin Club to support YSU and benefit from priority season tickets, game day parking, and access to hospitality suites. Be a part of the team behind the teams. Join the Penguin Club and make a difference. Call 330-9411-YSU or go to ysusports.com for more information. If you're just joining us, I'm Jim Campbell along with Dre Smith. This is Stambaugh Stadium at Youngstown State University. Youngstown State had to feel like they left a lot of points on the board in that first quarter. We opened the broadcast right talking about encouragement and certainly Robert Morris has to be encouraged by the way it has performed defensively so far. Yeah, it looked like they could have went down early 7-0. They were able to hold Youngstown State to a field goal and have really held their own in the trenches, which is something we didn't really know if they'd be able to do. And, you know, they've really shown that they came to play. You know, they, two years ago, they came in here and forced YSU to overtime in a 21-14 win. So you know, they have confidence playing here. This is Christian Turner. Explodes through a hole over the right side and crashes down near the 36-yard line, a 7-yard pickup. You saw the speed and explosiveness there for Turner as he, as you mentioned, exploded through that hole. You know, he has such athletic ability, such quick burst, and he's a freshman that the YSU coaches believe can really become one of the best you know, running backs we've seen here at Youngstown State, which is you know, impressive for That's them to say. That's saying something, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they're all throughout fall camp. You heard those comments, and it, it's, you take heed to it because you know the kind of running backs we've had here. This is Turner again, patient. Good foot movement, and he works his way down inside the 25. Penguins knocking on the door of the red zone again. Great job by Turner there, cutting back as the flow of the play was moving to the right side of the line. He's able to put his foot in the ground and get upfield, and that's what he does so well. There's no wasted time with Turner. When he sees a hole, he's going to hit it and get upfield. You're not going to draw the play out too long. Uh, with that speed, he's able to get upfield quickly. We mentioned all the success he had as a receiver in the season opener. He only got to carry the ball three times for 32 yards. He's carried it twice for 20 right here. He's alone in the backfield again, the deep set. Nathan Mays under center. Here we go. This is Turner again. Good footwork as he waited patiently for his blockers to do their job, and they obliged him in helping to lead the way that time. Tight end Shane Kuhn. This has to be a good sight for the YSU coaches because with your backup quarterback, Nate Mays, in the game, you want to be able to rely on the run game. Take some pressure off him. Don't put it in the air too much. You know, get him in good down and distance, comfortable situations, running the football. And they're starting to see some push up front now, getting, getting some success in the run game. And they're hastening the tempo somewhat, going to a no huddle offense, not a hurry up but a no huddle. And they're staying pretty basic here with two wide outs, a running back, Turner, Breaks a shirt tackle and fights his way to what would appear to be a first down, diving out of bounds around the 11 or 12 yard line. You saw the speed there from Turner. That's a play where I don't know if Tevin McCaster gets around the corner there and gets a first down. That's a play where he might get tackled for a loss. And McCaster, a great talented running back, but just doesn't have the speed that Turner does. That play, most guys are going to get caught in the backfield there and have a loss, but he's able to sneak around the corner and get a first down. And that's just you know the difference that, that he can bring. You see now him and McCaster in there together, another look that they can go to with you know, two back sets to have some variety. And they'll go to a slot left formation. The wide guy is Jeremiah Braswell, and inside him is Stefan Derrick. This is Turner again in heavy traffic right up the gut, and he drives down close to the 10. 
This is where Robert Morris has done a good job of holding. You know, they've given up some drives, given up some yardage where the Penguins get down deep, but this is what the Colonials want to do. They just want to bend but not break. You know, they're okay with giving up some yards. YSU's going to earn theirs, but if you can just force them to three instead of seven, you give yourself a chance to stay in the game. Well, that is five straight carries for Turner. And on the final play of the first quarter, he was a pass receiver. So he's handled it on six straight plays. He may get it again on the option. Mays, however, has the corner himself, tries to lean it into the end zone. And that is going to be a Youngstown State touchdown. Nathan Mays. This is what Nathan Mays brings. He brings that running element around the corner here. Does a good job getting away from a defender, keeping that body up, use of the arm, and getting in the end zone. Nate Mays is a guy who is multi-talented. He can run the ball and throw the ball. It just gives you a different feel, and you got to be encouraged if you're the YSU coaching staff to see your backup come in you know, and lead your team to a touchdown there. Zach Kennedy looking for his first extra point of the afternoon. He was two for three at Pitt. Kyle Hegedus is his holder. Splits the uprights, so the Penguins finally get into the end zone and capitalize. And with 11.43 to go in the first half, it's Youngstown State 13, Robert Morris nothing. Now the scoring drive of Youngstown State just put together an old-fashioned Penguins offensive display. 80 yards, 11 plays, 5 minutes and 23 seconds. And of those 11 plays, nine of them were running plays, including the 10-yard option run by quarterback Nathan Mays to get into the end zone. Zach Kennedy will kick off for the third time this afternoon. And Harrison Dreyer, the freshman, will return. This is going to hang up. Dreyer drives toward the end zone, and he'll take a knee for a touchback. You know, and on that Youngstown State scoring drive, Nate Mays gets the touchdown, but Christian Turner really carried the load. You know, had at one point, I think, five straight carries on that drive. And you know, you got a difference in the run game when you got the ball in the hands of Christian Turner, the talented freshman running back who looks like he's going to become, you know, immediately a key part of this offense for YSU. And we, we immediately saw a change in the dynamics of the YSU offense when he started running the ball out of the backfield. Well, the thing, too, that this gives Youngstown State, in the past, they've always had a guy that you can look at as primarily a power back and a couple of guys that you can look at as speed backs. And they've got that. And they've got depth behind those two guys as well. They really like uh, their depth at running back. This is Dreyer doing a nice job, gave a little ground to uh, keep the Penguins defender. That was, uh, let's see, that was uh, Armand Delevade off his feet, and uh, Dreyer was able to turn it into positive yardage. Been impressed with Dreyer so far. A young guy coming in, as you mentioned, wasn't listed on the depth chart, but he's gotten a lot of work here early. And he's, you know, got some shiftiness to him. He's a tough guy to bring down. And Armand Delevade, one of the most sure tacklers, you know, in the country. And if you're able to get around him, it's pretty impressive. Five yard pickup. Dre or a little shake and bake behind the line of scrimmage out close to the first down. Good job by the offensive front. Again, those guys are very, very young. Center Eric McAllister, redshirt freshman. Guard Tevin McCaff, or uh, the, uh, the guard on uh, one side. Jason Sheldon is a true freshman. <laughs> Yeah, you see five freshmen up front for Robert Morris, and you know you look at the size disparity. I mean, all five of those guys under 300 pounds. Where if you look on the other side, Youngstown State's got everybody over 310, 315. You know, so this is a group that's you know undersized and young. You know, but they, they've done okay here early on. This offense just hasn't been on the field. This is only their second drive. We're already into the second quarter. Dreyer again. Oh, he does a good job using his blockers, breaks a bunch of tackles, and he's got their biggest gain of the day. Another impressive run by Dreyer. He's got a good mix of power and speed. He's elusive, but he's also powerful, breaking some tackles there as well. He'll be on the depth chart next week. You can count on that. I believe that was 
It was. It was Armand Delevade who was there again, and Drager just wouldn't let him get enough to make the tackle. First down at the Penguins, 36. You already see the difference on this Robert Morris offense this year to last year. They only had 103 total yards against YSU last season in the game here at Stambaugh Stadium and a 38-6 win for YSU. You know, this offense in just a year has transformed into a, a completely different unit that's much more dangerous and talented. Williams, handoff. And this time there's no escaping the Penguins' defense. Different running back, though, trying to do the escape. That's T.J. Neal, a sophomore, who ran for 57 yards on 11 carries against Dayton in the season opener. And it looks like we are going to get a Youngstown State timeout after that two-yard gain with about nine and a half minutes to play here in the first half. And with that, we pause with the Penguins and Colonials at Stambaugh Stadium. Some of the games, we want all the live games with DirecTV NFL Sunday Ticket. We don't just want some Dak Prescott, we want all the Dak Prescott. Switch to DirecTV and get every game every Sunday with NFL Sunday Ticket. Call 1-800-DIRECTV. Robert Morris, second down and eight at the Youngstown State 34-yard line. Jimmy Walker in a spread formation. There's the handoff to Dreyer, nowhere to go this time. Excellent penetration right up the middle coming from Faison Chapman, the senior defensive end out of Chicago. Two yard loss, he had a tackle for loss against Pitt last week, that'll bring up third and 10. Yeah, Chapman had a big sack in that game as YSU mounted that comeback to tie the game in the second half. Chapman, the guy who's waited in the wings and waited for his chance, obviously sat behind Derek Rivers and Avery Moss for the last few years. And finally getting his chance to be a starter on this team, and he's one of the vocal leaders for this defense, a real high-energy guy you know, that's very vocal on this side of the ball. He's a big impact player coming off the bench last year. Big rush. Just, they were trying to set up the screen, and Williams did a pretty good job in just literally throwing it away into the traffic. Yeah, they were trying to set up a screen play there, but just too many red jerseys coming right down you know, the A-gap right into Walker's face. He couldn't, you know, find a way to get the ball into the hands of his intended receiver. So we saw a little pep talk before he went to break. <laughs> Bo Pelini was giving it to his defense, giving them some, you know, some words as he was not happy with the way they were performing before the timeout, and they've responded ever since. Fourth and ten. Not much point in a punt here. Field goal try into that wind. Not a good idea. So Robert Morris going to try to make something happen. Big rush, Williams gets, or Walker rather, gets away, but he will not yep. get away from and they're gonna Donald call. Masir. They're gonna call the horse caller here. This is a point of emphasis this year. You are not allowed to get your hand inside the neck or near the name plate. This is a point of emphasis. And you'll see it right here as Masir gets that hand up near the name plate. You oh, cannot yeah. do that. That's something they're really trying to enforce more this season, and you're gonna get that flag every time. The Initial pressure came from Justice Reed. Backup defensive end, a junior who had a couple tackles for loss last week. You know, the fans here, as you see the student section here at the stadium, do not like it, but that is the right call. You know, in years past, that's been sort of a blurry call to where they would call it if you got your hand inside, you know, the collar, but they wouldn't call it if you pulled it down from the back top part of the jersey near the name right. nameplate, but they're really trying to change that and, and enforce when you pull them down, and that's exactly what Mazir did. Well, anything that involves the head and neck is getting a lot more attention, and rightfully so. Tough penalty is you're just about yep. to get off the field. and Yeah, with great field position. Get the ball for your offense near midfield. This is Dreyer on the delay. Nothing happening. There's Chapman again. Right, Bryce Gibson turned it inside. Came up from his cornerback spot. Good job by Gibson and Chapman. Gibson, a true freshman, starting out at corner. He started at Pitt last week. And a guy that really shined throughout fall camp. And 
You didn't know who was going to be playing corners. Is Kenny Bishop and David Rivers, the starters from a year ago, both moved on to the NFL as well. Both of them got into some NFL camps. Uh, but, you know, Gibson really burst on the scene and earned that job as a true freshman. So on second and ten, Walker with the toss to Dreyer. He wants to throw it. Got nobody open. Going to try to make a silk purse out of the proverbial sow's ear and is ridden out of bounds by Justice Reed and Billy Nico Hurst. Great job by the YSU secondary. You know, not biting on the trick plays. They wanted to run the halfback pass. As everybody stayed at home, stayed disciplined, and didn't let anybody get loose. And you see Justice Reed there, the flo another Florida transfer, who they expect to be an impact player and fill the, the hole that Rivers and Moss have left. And he played well last week, had the sack, a strip sack fumble. They really let YSU, you know, mount that comeback. So he's a guy they're expecting big things from on that D-line. Third and ten. Since that little pep talk, life has changed for Harrison Dreyer. <laughs> big rush coming. Walker hit as he throws, and it's overthrown. Tim Vecchio actually had a step. He was open behind the defender, but under heavy pressure, Walker could not find the mark, and now it is Robert Morris that will have to settle for a field goal. And the guy coming on to kick it is Nick Biseglia, who was two for three on field goal attempts in the season opener. Biseglia hit the walk-off game winner with four seconds left last week to beat Dayton. This may not make it. Looks like wide left. Nope, did not. So he did not hit it well to start with. This is a tricky place to, to kick, and Biseglia just found that out. 6.43 to go in the first half. Penguins dodge the bullet and still lead 13 to nothing. After the missed field goal, Youngstown State gets the ball back at its own 21-yard line, leading 13 to nothing. Nate Mays under center. Little shift going on here for the Penguins. Anthony Parente in motion. And this is Christian Turner sliding along the line of scrimmage and crossing the 25 to almost the 27 yard line. Yeah, it's funny, Christian Turner wearing that number 20. And boy, he looks like another guy that wore number 20 here for the last four years, Jody Webb. Such an amazing career that Jody had, and a lot of similarities between him and Turner. This is a six-yard pickup, and look at the great use of blocking, patience, quick, choppy steps, and Turner, after gaining six on first down, gets the Penguins a new first down to work with out at the 44 on that carry, 34, excuse me, on that carry. He just has such a good feel when the ball's in his hands, just how to set up blocks, and Shane Kuhn, the senior fullback tight end, told us that it took three days in fall camp for them to know that <laughs> Turner was a stud. Deep throw by Mays. Perfect delivery over the shoulder, but incomplete as Damone Patterson could not hang on. That was a terrific throw by Nathan Mays. Great throw, and it looked like it was going to be a downfield connection to Patterson, who's one of the best vertical threats you know, in the country. But to Ball Brown, Defense. Yeah, great play. But offsides on Robert Morris. Late. Still first down. Yeah, Brown, the corner there, the sophomore, made a really good play, and he's done a good job. He made a good play down in the red zone early in the first quarter to prevent a touchdown guarding Patterson and doing a good job staying with him there and getting a hand up to break up the pass. Good time to take a shot like that when you figure you've got a free play with the penalty flag down. That was a tremendous throw by Mays as he put it right where it needed to be. Good play by the defender, but good looking throw. Tight end Anthony Parente, a senior from the Pittsburgh area, played at Gateway High School, acting as the fullback here. He'll block for Christian Turner, who crosses midfield down to the 47-yard line. You mentioned Anthony Parente, who played tight end and fullback. That tight end position is a group that this team feels really good about. They're deep. And we mentioned. Kevin Rader, we saw Chris Durkin get a reception early. They got Parente, Shane Kuhn. A lot of depth and experience at that tight end position. Back and play quickly. Turner on second and one. Finds the edge and runs into his own bench near midfield. It's another first down. He's able to scoot outside. And I just think it's going to be really hard for him not to become 
you know, the main ball carrier out of the backfield as well. You know, I think the coaches have talked about not wanting to put too much on the young freshman. You know, it's early in his career, but what he's shown in these first, you know, his first game and a half, and it's going to be hard to keep him off the field and keep the ball out of his hands. He just gives you such a playmaking ability. Simple formation, a couple of tights, two wide outs. Parente in motion. A little counter play for Kevin, Tevin McCaster, and he blasts across midfield. As you can see, totally different philosophy for Tevin, and he's he's glad to do it. <laughs> Somebody's got to get the tough yards, and as, as uh, Coach Polini said earlier in the week, when you need tough yards, Tevin's the guy you want with the football. Absolutely. He, as good as Christian Turner is, you know, Tevin's a guy that's going to get those hard yards for you. Mays going deep again. Incomplete. Overthrown. There was a little uh, hands back and forth there. Robert Morris was begging for a penalty, but. Get off sides again on Robert Morris. Results in a first down. Nate Mays doing a great job with that hard count, using his cadence to get the nose tackles of Robert Morris to jump into the neutral zone, so take another five yards there. First down after Robert Morris, 42. We talk about Tevin McCaster, you know, the hard yards and the way he runs. His performance at Eastern Washington in that FCS semifinal game, which sent YSU to the championship game a year ago, I mean, it's been a long time since I've seen a guy run the way he did that day the power and the second effort, breaking tackles. I mean, he, he really is a tough kid, and that was an impressive performance that day, and I think he earned everybody's respect with the way he ran over 150 yards on the ground out in Cheney, Washington last year. I actually heard a few people mention him in the same breath with the legendary Tamron Smith. Oh, ill-advised there, but the Penguins may, nope, they cough it up. Low snap, and in order to get the play that was called moving, Nathan Mays tried to scoop it ahead to Christian Turner. As you can see, that was not well advised, and the Penguins turn it over. Yeah, it looked like he thought Turner was going to be ready to get the ball there, but Turner was heading to block, and just the sloppy plays that you can't have. You know, these are the plays that you have to eliminate. You know, When you're playing a team like Robert Morris that just wants to hang around, they know that they're outgunned in terms of talent and depth, but... You know, they, they just want to hang around, get extra opportunities. When you give, when you turn the ball over and give them extra drives, this is what allows them to stay in, stay in the game as you know, the game moves along. So the turnovers are even at one apiece now. From under center, Williams gives it to Dreyer. Good cut, Walker rather, gives it to Dreyer. Good cutback out to midfield. It'll bring up second and three. In the front of Robert Morris doing a good job of holding at the line of scrimmage and then getting up to the second level. The linemen are doing a great job of, you know, doing a great job at the first point of attack, but then getting up to the second level, getting some hands on linebackers, and letting Dreyer work to the second level. You pick up seven yards on first down, makes it so much easier when you're in second and short. You know, being so young up front, you know, beating Dayton is great and all, but being able to execute against a YSU defensive front, that is a huge plus. Dreyer pounds straight ahead, and again, his feet never stop moving. He's going to get some extra yards. He's going to be tough to tackle down low, even if you, well, you can't wrap him up probably below the knees very well. He's going to be just short of the first down on that carry outside the 47-yard line. You know, another key that we haven't mentioned is Savon Smith is not in the middle of that YSU defensive line. He's a guy who's a full-time starter a year ago, one of their key guys in the middle at D-tackle, a big run stopper. He had a concussion and couldn't play last week at Pitt. They thought he'd be ready to go this week, but we haven't seen him out there, so it looks like he's out for the second straight week with that concussion. So that's a big you know, missing piece on the D-line, especially in the run defense. Yeah, they have listed him as a starter on the pregame depth chart. Lamont Ragland, a junior out I'm of out. Dayton, a 295-pounder, is filling the gap. Robert Morris taking a timeout here with just over three minutes left in the first half, down 13-0, and in a critical third and short just inside Youngstown State territory. Youngstown State will entertain another non-full scholarship FCS team next Saturday when the Blue Devils of Connecticut uh, Central, yeah. Connecticut, Central State. Connecticut State come to town. These two schools were 
actually, those two schools were actually members of the same conference at one time. The, it was the Mid-Continent Conference that uh, was mostly basketball for, for Central Connecticut. In fact, it was. I'm not sure what the status of their football program was at the time, and Youngstown State was had just transitioned into uh, Division I in basketball. But the Mid-Continent Conference was so ill-named, it stretched from Utah to Connecticut at one time and into Alabama. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Should have just called it the Continental Congress. Uh, that's Dreyer again, and he'll have the first down. And we talk about this YSU defense and a lot of the guys that they missed from a year ago. Only two defensive players on this defense were starters in last season's opener and this season's opener. I mean, so you only have two guys who started last year that come back to start this season. So a lot of new faces on the YSU defense, a lot of new, you know, chemistry that needs to be worked out. So, you know, it's something that they're going to have to work through here early in the year. First down at the Penguins, 46. Jimmy Walker. Little pump fake, Dreyer patiently waiting for something to open up. Nothing did. He'll get a yard. It'll be second and nine. And at the point of attack for the Penguins defense, Justice Reed. We also saw Wes Thompson making a play there, number 90. He's the redshirt freshman from Boardman, Ohio, another local product. And how about Wes Thompson last week at Pitt? Pitt gets a blocked punt uh, return and takes it all the way down to about the YSU five-yard line. Wes Thompson gets a big sack. A guy that nobody expected to play a whole lot in that game with Savon Smith out. He filled in, got a big sack, forced a field goal, which Pitt missed. So he's made some big plays early this season. Walker throwing all the way. Here comes the rush, and he is trifected. And the guy you were just talking about, Wesley Thompson, was in on the rush with Justice Reed. A loss of nine. We see Justice Reed right now. I mean, Number 70 for Robert Morris. Rene Rodriguez, the right tackle, is just getting absolutely dominated at the point of attack. That's a mismatch right now. Justice Reed is an athletic big man, the Florida transfer. You know, he's an elite level talent at that pass rusher position. And right now, just a lot for Rodriguez to handle coming off the edge. So it is a third and long now for Robert Morris with 1.39 to go before halftime. They're trying to figure out a way to salvage some points before they head to the locker room. They're probably, they probably feel both fortunate that it's not a larger deficit, but they also have to take credit for making some big plays and stopping Youngstown State twice in the red zone. Absolutely, you know, I think that you could look at it both ways. I mean, this could have been a game that could have got out of hand early, you know, for Robert Morris with YSU knocking on the door a couple times and they were able to hold and, you know, I think at this point you just want to get out of here still within striking distance, you know, be within a couple scores and you know, not be too far down. But you, know, you look at this YSU defense, last week head coach Bo Pelini and defensive coordinator Carl Pelini told us that they just thought that, you know, this team needed to be more aggressive and play on their toes. You know, they were sitting back against Pitt, kind of letting them dictate the terms, being more reactive than aggressive. And, you know, I think after that pep talk that we talked about earlier from Coach Polini, they're being much more aggressive and really flying around. Third and 13. Jimmy Walker wants to throw. Good block on the outside rush and the throw a little high. He had Tim Vecchio in space at the Penguins 30. That would have been good enough for a first down and Vecchio couldn't hold on. That ball had some mustard on it. And yeah, that was a great route concept run by Robert Morris over to the right side as they snuck Vecchio down in on a little bit of an in route behind the linebackers. And you know, Walker thought he had him, had to get a little you know, height on the throw to get it over those linebackers, but couldn't quite bring it down enough to put it in you know, Vecchio's wheelhouse. Tough play to make. So, in the punt, again, for Robert Morris is Adam Check. His long snapper is a local product from Neshanik. Nice kick. And it is down inside the 15 yard line, getting down on coverage for Robert Morris was Drew Hogan, a junior product of Endicott, New York. And you see Nate Mays talking with his guys as he's had to come in and run this offense after the injury to Hunter Wells. 
happened. It looked like some type of arm injury. You know, we'll see how that progresses as the weeks move along. And you feel bad for Hunter, you know, because he's a guy that had such a great run for this team last year as he came in late in the season and took over control of the offense, led him to a 7-2 and two record in a national championship game appearance. And he looked really good last week at Pitt, threw for over 300 yards, a couple touchdowns, and really expecting him to have a great year. And you just you hope the injury isn't something that's going to keep him out for a lengthy amount of time. He overcame a lot last year with injuries, was almost the forgotten man in the program through the first five or six weeks, and then injuries at that position, and he had to go back to work. Tevin McCaster finding his number being, it's like he's got a bullseye on his chest when he's in the game. Robert Morris is keying on him, and he is stopped for no gain. Gerald Ferguson did a good job there coming up from his linebacker position and making that play. Ferguson, talented senior linebacker, he led the Colonials with eight tackles last week, also had a sack and a fumble recovery. He was the Northeast Conference Defensive Player of the Week a week ago, so he's a guy that's going to be all over the place for the Colonials. The caster, big hole up the middle this time. Tevin leans to his right and bangs his way out to the 20, and maybe another yard. It'll be short of a first down. Clock down to about 40 seconds to play in the first half. Physical run there by the Newcastle product, McCaster, and we've seen him and Turner get the bulk of the carries here today. Bootleg by Mays. He's going to throw it, and that is caught on the far side, I believe, by Alvin Bailey. Another third down conversion. Who do they go to? Alvin Bailey. He is the guy that... Seems like YSU looks to on any big third down play. He just has such a good feel for, you know, sitting down in the zone, you know, finding the, the yard marker, getting enough for the first down. The Florida transfer has really helped this offense become a better passing attack over the last two years. So it's first and 10 at the 32. We're uh, down to 23 seconds left before halftime. Mays is going to load it up again, steps up against pressure. And he will be dragged down from behind at midfield by Gerald Ferguson. Penguins will go into their no huddle. Only 14 seconds on the clock and it kill it here. Try and see if they can get into maybe possible field goal range with 12 seconds left. They do have a timeout remaining, I believe. Well, you can get a lot of plays Please off in 12 clock. seconds. Please start the play clock. trying to get the play clock started and it won't even properly reset. There it goes, finally. I did a high school game last night where the game clock worked great during pregame and halftime, did not run at all during the game itself. That's Go figure. Not ideal, no. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Penguins from uh, midfield, second down after the spike. Mays to throw, good protection. Got a man underneath, this is Isaiah Scott out of Hubbard, got enough for the first down inside the Robert Morris 40. That's his first catch of the season. Really talented guy. Well, they're going to mark it short of the 40 now. They've already moved the sticks, though. <laughs> Penguins will burn their last time out here. And with five seconds left, you have to wonder if they'll try and run something quick to the sidelines. It's going to be tough. It looks like they're going to bring Zach Kennedy out as he's already in the huddle. So it's going to be a long field goal. So it'll be a 56 yarder. Now I've seen Zach make you know 55 plus yarders before, you know, in warm-ups and in practice. Now that you know you don't have a whole lot of wind down at this end of the stadium, a little bit of a, a breeze. So Here's, if you're not familiar with the wind at Stambaugh Stadium, it, you might as you can't be an expert because you can look one direction and the flags are blowing one way, you look the other end and they're blowing a different way. The, the wind tends to sweep around the corners, especially uh, of the west side stands. The streamers, for instance, up by the big scoreboard, camera right, aren't moving much. The ones that Kennedy will be kicking into have quite a bit of motion in them. Here we go from 56, line drive. Missed it wide right, but he tried to keep it low to get the carry. 
but uh, maybe had it been higher, he'd have gotten a little help from the wind. In either case, the scoreboard does not blink as we come to halftime. Youngstown State leads Robert Morris 13 to nothing.
Getting ready for the second half of action between Youngstown State and Robert Morris. The Penguins leading 13 to nothing. And Dre, how do the more uh, specific numbers kind of line up, correlate to what the scoreboard says? Well, if you look at the stats, Jim, you would think that Youngstown State should be up a lot more than 13 points. Total yardage, YSU 227 to just 76 total yards for Robert Morris. In the passing department, 108 yards through the air for YSU, just 13 passing yards for the Colonials. And then you look uh, at the rushing. You know, Robert Morris has been a little bit more effective on the ground with 63 net rushing yards. The Penguins have gained 119 on the ground. So the number's really in favor of the Penguins. But you know, Robert Morris forced that big turnover before half on the fumble, on a bad snap, was able to kind of keep them in the game. They've held up in the red zone a little bit. You look at the individual stats. I thought Nate Mays has done a good job coming in as the backup quarterback after the injury to Hunter Wells. He's 6 of 8 for 68 yards, has been solid. He's also ran for 25 yards and a touchdown. Tevin McCaster has 40 yards on 12 carries. And Christian Turner, the freshman, has turned heads again. Nine carries, 55 yards, was electric in that first half with the ball in his hands. And on the other side, it's been Harrison, uh, Harrison Dreyer, who's been really good for Robert Morris. 11 carries, 52 yards. Jimmy Walker just two of eight for 13 yards through the air. So statistically, it's all in the Penguins' favor, but you know, give Robert Morris a lot of credit for staying in the game. Yeah, their defense has uh, done a terrific job in the red zone, stopping the Penguins twice and forcing them to settle for field goals. Robert Morris next week will be at home to play Virginia Military, which is currently leading Catawba 10 to seven with about six minutes to play in the third quarter. YSU's opponent next, next week, Central Connecticut State, dropped a 38-31 decision to Fordham this afternoon. And uh, one of the best games, one of the best matchups this weekend in the FCS, North Dakota State and Eastern Washington. And they will be kicking off in about 20 minutes. Two of the perennial powers in the FCS, consistently deep in the playoffs. That'll be a great matchup here early in the year. All right, Penguins kicking off to start the second half. And Zach Kennedy with the wind at his back will drive this one right up against the end line. And Robert Morris will start from its own 20. Well, sort of the same theme as last year. We saw Robert Morris come in here last year and have a hard time on offense. They had zero total yards at halftime of last year's game. And they only have 76 total yards here today. So the YSU defense has been able to hold tight, keeping them scoreless. See if Jimmy Walker and the Colonials can get something going here to start the third quarter. Ball at the 25 rather than the 20. They have checked uh, Jonathan Wanett, a sophomore, 210 pounder, number 22 in as a fullback. And quarterback Jimmy Walker will start the second half under center. This is Harrison Dreyer, freshman, redshirt freshman, who was not on the two deep chart that went out to the media. Did not start, but has been an impact player for them here this afternoon. He picks up five there. Seems like he's always able to make the first man miss. You know, it's never the first guy to him that's able to make the tackle. He's been shedding tacklers at the point of attack, able to get upfield and get positive yards on first down. There, 185 pounder. He'll get it again. Had some help from his fullback, gets to the corner and runs it out of bounds across the YSU 40. And Youngstown State defense not doing a good job there of setting the edge. You know, that's something that was done so well by the All Americans, Avery Moss and Derek Rivers, was setting that edge and not letting the running back get around the edge. As you see here, Dre are able to bounce it outside. And the Penguins don't have contain, and he's able to turn up field and get positive yards. Something the Youngstown State defense is going to have to do better as the season moves along, setting that edge and forcing the runner back inside to where the help is. Dreyer, a Western Pennsylvania native from Clareton. Single setback this time. Wide out to each side. They go to the running game. Dreyer stops. Big mistake. He had nowhere to go, and he was met standing up by Johnson Luigi get a call here probably going to be holding on the Colonials as they start to make their way back it's a loss of a yard Penguins will take the penalty 
Chop block. They get a chop block on the Colonials. 15 yard penalty. Still first down. And there's all you need to know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Saw Armin elevated on that last tackle as well. You know, Armin's such an, a, a gutsy, instinctual football player. You know, Jim, they talk about all the time that he's a guy, when you look at him, you would never think that he'd be one of the best linebackers, you know, at the FCS level. He doesn't look particularly intimidating or physically, you know, he doesn't stand out, but boy, is he a football player. Just runs to the ball, knows where everything's going, so instinctual, and, you know, he's played here ever since his freshman year, and what a leader he's become on that YSU defense. He's made people learn how to pronounce his name, that's for sure. <laughs> Seems like he's got five or more tackles every game. First and 25, tight formation, though, for the Colonials. Jimmy Walker wants to throw, has the protection, finds a receiver underneath for the completion. And on the catch, it was his favorite target, Tim Vecchio, on the coverage for the Penguins, Kyle Hedges. Walker able to get some time there. You know, he's really been under pressure a lot today where he hasn't had a lot of clean pockets to throw from, but the offensive line there did a good job protecting him, got a nice window, and delivered a good ball to his most reliable target, Vecchio. 11-yard pickup. Makes it second and 14. Empty backfield this time. Left side is loaded. That's where he goes with the football. Nice juke move, and Dreyer decides before he risks getting hurt to take a dive to the turf at the 45, but it'll bring up 44, make that. It'll bring up third and five. Seeing the Penguins playing a lot of too high with man underneath, so you know Walker understanding he's got man coverage with his talented running back, Dreyer, matched up against a linebacker in Delevade. Wants to get it in his hands and try and let him make a play. Taking what's there to set up the third down. Third and five, Robert Morris at its own 44-yard line. First possession of the second half, 13-0, Youngstown State. Warren Robinson in motion back and forth, and that number four helps draw the Penguins' number four, Justice Reed, offside. Offside, defense number four, unabated. That five-yard penalty results in the first down. It's going to be the third penalty of the day on Youngstown State. Had a couple key ones in the first half, and I know that's something Coach Bellini and his staff are going to be looking at is, you know, we can't have these penalties in crucial third downs and crucial moments. And right there, you just make things a little bit easier on the Colonials. And one of those penalties wiped out what would have been the first touchdown of the ball game. Nifty throw from Nathan Mays to Damone Patterson made the catch, but there, was, there were offsetting penalties on the play. This is Dreyer again. Good patience, gets into the second level, and he was patient enough to use an apparent hold to get that upfield yardage, or downfield yardage, if you will. Once he gets past the 50, this play will come back on a holding call. Yeah, right now that offensive line is having a hard time handling the Penguin front, and and when they're getting beat, getting a hand out and holding, and, and we are seeing okay. Savon Smith in the ball Offense, game. It looks like for the first time, I thought I spotted penalty. number 52 out there. No first down. And it's good to see Savon in there. I believe that is number 52 down there in the middle of that defense. 295-pound yep. junior out of Syracuse. Penalty takes the ball back to the 39, brings up first and 20. Smith, a guy that started all last year in the middle. Anchored the middle of that run defense, so a key guy for the Penguins defense to have back in there. Three receivers to the bottom of your screen. And Walker looks the other way. Pressure coming, down he goes. Looks like that was Donald Mazier, the defensive tackle, getting in there. Just that speed rush. He's not a powerful guy. You know, they talk about him. He's more of a rusher, has a lot of speed from the defensive tackle position. You saw him beat his man right there, and that's that's impressive for a D tackle to run the way he did and get down the quarterback and bring down the quarterback. Looks like a linebacker running from that D tackle position. Faison Chapman got in on the party as well, all the way back to the 27-yard line. That's a 12-yard loss. It'll bring up second and 32. 
Mize here, another guy, a senior from Homestead, Florida, who hasn't played a lot with a lot of the guys we've had on that D-line. So there's a lot of guys getting their first chance after being in this program to get in there and play, and I know they're relishing that opportunity. Three-man front, and it challenges the offensive line. Throw away by Jimmy Walker and another penalty flag. The Penguins' pressure really discombobulating the Colonials right now. And we talked about how hard it was going to be for that Robert Morris offensive line to rein in this talented D-line of YSU. And they held in there admirably early, but it's starting to look like that you know, they're wearing down a little bit going against the Justice Reeds and Donald Mizeers and Faison Chapmans. Is, you know, they're really starting to get some heavy pressure. Well, and here's the other thing, too. They put themselves, they were moving the ball well on the ground and had a little pass completion underneath, but then a penalty pushed them back. Now they've got to change their thinking a little bit, try to get some of it back. They go to the air, and the YSU defense, knowing that, puts the heat on. You know, and I think Carl Pellini has been a little bit more aggressive so far. You know, he's been dialing up a few blitzes, getting some guys coming off the edge. And you know, he said that it's been a challenge for him working with new guys, a lot of new faces. They've had to scheme some stuff up a little differently, but he said it's been exciting. You know, they have to do things a little different without that same pass rush that they've had last year, but they're starting to get it. You know, go in here in the second half and we'll get a timeout. Well, you hate to have to take a timeout when it's second and 42, but they did and so will we. 10-22 left in the third quarter. Still Youngstown State 13, Robert Morris nothing. Well, let's see what the Colonials came up with during that timeout that will help them dig themselves out of a second down and 42 to go circumstance will be an empty backfield with Harrison Dreyer in motion out of it to a wide split left Walker looks right and throws behind his intended receiver Taven Allison Allison's had a couple of drops today and that's I think the second occasion when Walker has misfired on an attempted connection and Allison, the freshman, transfer from Eastern Michigan, had that big 72-yard TD catch last week from Walker and their win over Dayton. But YSU just continuing to get pressure right in the face of Walker when he drops back and just making it so hard for him to stand in there and find a receiver. Well, now in third and 42, you don't have to be aggressive. You just want to keep everything in front of you so they don't get a big play, something that often breaks when you put pressure on in a situation like this. Penguins with decent pressure. Here it comes late. You can only hang on so long and breaking through again, having a big day, is Justice Reed. Justice Reed going to get his second sack of the day as he is just right now a man possessed. Gets blocked to the ground, gets back up, still able to make the sack. And the Florida transfer, you know, he, we know what kind of talent he's got. And he's starting to look like a couple of the guys we've had here in the past. That's, that's a dangerous pass rusher coming off the edge. And, Coaching staff got to be excited about the way he's looking. That's where Jimmy Walker has to know, I only get so long in the pocket, and then i got to make a decision. In this case, he decides to settle for a punt from inside the 10. Ball fielded on a hop and returned from the 45-yard line. And that's actually Jake to Coates. 36, 37, and Jake Coates, yeah. a track and football star at uh, Warren JFK, John F. Kennedy High School. Yeah, he had a number change this week, is switched to number 25, and he he's a fast kid. You know, he has a lot of speed, and the coaches really like the way that he's not scared on those punt returns. You saw him, and you know, the ball came up, he wasn't afraid to field it and run with it, and when he gets ahead of steam, he's got a lot of speed. And he's the kind of guy that can make you miss as well when he's got the ball in his hands. Penguins are being penalized, but it will not affect possession. We'll be right back after they sort it out with the Penguins still leading. Some moments can change everything. You can't always predict them, but you can game plan for them. For 150 years, generations of families have chosen Pacific Life for retirement and life insurance solutions to help them reach their goals being ready for wherever life leads. That's the power of Pacific. 
Ask a financial advisor about Pacific Life. This is a story about mail and packages, and it's also a story about people. And while we make more e-commerce deliveries to homes than anyone else in the country, we never forget that your business is our business. The United States Postal Service, priority. Penguins start from their own 45-yard line on their first possession of the second half. Robert Morris had the ball for about five and a half minutes at the start of the third quarter, but it was a pretty painful five and a half minutes. They endured some negative plays and shot themselves in the foot with some penalties. This is Tevin McCaster. Those are, that is the trademark of a Tevin McCaster run there. Second effort, just pushing the pile forward. And you know, Tevin's a kid that's really kind of growing into being a leader on this team, too. Sat behind Martin Ruiz and Jody Webb the last few years. Learned a lot from those guys, two of the best in school history. And you know, he seems ready to really become one of the leaders of this football team offensively. Nathan Mays at quarterback. McCaster. No, that was a great fake. Mays kept it, flips it out in the flat to Alvin Bailey. Wow. That was some nifty ball handling right there. I'll tell you what, Nate Mays is so good with that play fake on the read option. He fakes cameramen out and us on the field. I mean, you know, when I've been down on the field during practice and fall camp, he'll, you have no idea who has the football. He does such a good job right there and then had the alertness to stay behind the line of scrimmage, flip the ball out for a good game. That is a first down at the Robert Morris, 43. McCaster head down, dragging white-shirted defenders with him as far as he could go, which is the 38. Seeing that offensive line for the Penguins starting to play with a lot more attitude, a lot more physicality. And I know that offensive line coach Carm Priscillo had to have challenged them at halftime and told them, as you see Hunter Wells there on the sideline, the starting quarterback for the Penguins in a sling. And that's not what you want to see if you're a Youngstown State Penguins fan. Couldn't see the monitor very well. Which arm was it? Toss sweep. McCaster's got the corner. Penalty marker down. McCaster may make it to the end zone, but I don't think it'll matter. Knocked down short at the one or two yard line, but a penalty marker back at the 25. Yeah, they're going to get a hold, I think, here on the outside, some type of penalty on maybe a wide receiver, a tight end blocking out wide. Yep, had two, uh, two guys escorting. It is holding coming back, but Jim, it did look like it was the right arm of Hunter Wells, that throwing arm. So obviously not good news there, and you hope that he can get back as soon as possible. Looks like they, like they got Alvin Bailey previous in the play there. I think Alvin Bailey had a hand from, from the back of a Colonials defender, and they'll bring it back. And again, penalties. You get a big run, set you up with first and goal, and it comes back. You know, that's something that as this season moves along for YSU, and you know, they start moving into this conference in the Missouri Valley and that tough schedule that it always brings, these are the kind of things that you just can't have because you know, against some, some big-time teams, this is the kind of stuff that's going to lose your football games. Second and 13 after the penalty is assessed. Winds up being like a 45-yard penalty. Another nice play action. Mays, defender falls in front of him, takes off, looks behind him to make sure he knows where the enemy is and drives down to the 35. And I have to believe that there's going to be someone in Nate Mays' ear telling him, you need to get down. When you're running the football, you are the backup. You know, we don't need to go to our third string option right now. We already have our starter hurt. And when you run the football, protect yourself. Get down because they need Nate Mays right now. You know, they need him you know, to be able to stay healthy and stay in this game and put himself in harm's way when he runs the football. Picks up 10. It brings up third and three. McCaster, first down. And now you're starting to see some extracurricular activity over with Shane Kuhn and a Robert Morris defender. And Shane Kuhn led the blocking there. And uh, there have been a, some emotions building on an earlier place. Some players were slapping hands off each other. And Kuhn brings that physicality and that attitude as a fullback, a senior, but you don't want to get an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty and set yourself back even farther. So it's a first down at the Colonials 33 yard line. Mays to McCaster. Head down. Got three. With Hunter Wells out, the one thing, having Nate Mays in, you know, this is valuable playing time, you know, for the young guy who 
played a little bit last year, but you know this is his, one of his first full times being the guy running the show. So this is valuable experience as the season moves along if he has to play in a more featured role. Doing it like in a two-minute drill. McCaff, oh, another great play fake, but a pass off the mark. That went way over the head of Alvin Bailey as he was trying to set up a little wide receiver screen to the far side. And got away from him on the throw. So be second, I think that third down and seven. We talk about those tight ends lining up in the backfield, acting as fullbacks. YSU does not have anybody on their roster that they list as a fullback. Absolutely, yeah, Parente and Kuhn, who are tight ends, but you know, really, Kuhn's really become almost like a full-time fullback, so right. it's good to have versatile guys like that that can do both. Christian Turner has checked into the backfield. Nathan Mays doing some checking off at the line of scrimmage, takes the snap, looks left, good job with coverage, nice throw underneath. This is Isaiah Scott, the Hubbard product, dragged out of bounds around the 15 with a YSU first down. And you mentioned it earlier, Jim, Isaiah Scott is such a talented guy. I mean, his size and speed, he is an athletic specimen at the wide receiver position. And I know they're really expecting more out of him this year to become you know, one of the go-to guys step up and become a more featured part of this offense because he's got the ability to be one of the better receivers in the conference. 20-yard pickup, first down at the 14. Right back at it with Tevin McCaster. Actually breaks that tackle, but he was held up long enough for help to arrive, but still winds up gaining four. Robert Morris thinks it's recovered a fumble. Yeah, he looks like he lost the football. We'll see here as we get a replay. Rolling on the field, the runner down, second down. So he did lose it, but he was And it does down. look like the knee did hit. So just from first look at that replay, it does look like the knee hit the ground and then the ball came out. That's why she was trying to rush and get a play so it can't be reviewed. This handoff goes nowhere, and the Robert Morris defense steps up, as it did a number of times in the red zone in the first half. He's got to continue to give credit to Robert Morris's defense. I mean, you know, they've been on the field a lot today. You know, they, YSU offense has controlled time of possession, and, you know, they've really held their own still, you know, still in this football game. Mays rifles it. Did Scott scoop it up? No, they say he got it on the skip. It looks like Isaiah wants to review it. He thinks yeah. that he caught the football. So we'll see if we get a review here. See There's we... also a penalty marker down on the goal line right in front of the goal post. Isaiah still thinks he made that catch. Here's a replay. It's hard to tell, it looks it really like. Is. He might have had the hand underneath. You gotta, really hard to tell whether that ball hit the turf or bounced up from his hand up into his body. How smart are we? We're trying to watch a monitor that has a lot of glare on it and they just showed it on the big scoreboard. <laughs> you didn't see it. <laughs> Now so it's they, fourth down, they're so saying. They, they won't, there isn't any question they're going to say that it was incomplete. So another big third down here in the red zone. And if you're Robert Morris, you know, if you're able to hold him to a field goal attempt here. Yeah, because that makes it fourth it down. It is fourth right down, there. correct. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, so this will be a 27-yard field goal attempt. And coming on to make it is Zach Kennedy. But another win for Robert Morris. You know, yep. you're able to, to bend but not break. You force another field goal. And, even if this goes through, it's still a two possession game. So, you know, with all the time of possession and the yardage differential, Youngstown State has to feel like they should be a little bit more in control of this football game. Zach Kennedy lines it up. Kyle Hedges sets it down, and Kennedy. Bangs it through, his third three-pointer of the afternoon, and now with 4.47 left in the third quarter. It's Youngstown State 16, Robert Morris nothing. Youngstown State preparing to kick off after a 45-yard, 12-play, 4-minute, 38-second drive, culminated in a 27-yard field goal by Zach Kennedy to make it 16 to nothing. Robert Morris's opponent next week, Colonials will be at home, is Virginia Military, which is losing to Division II Catawba, 20 to 13, with about 10 minutes to play in their game. Kennedy hangs it, 
near the goal line and into the end zone with the help of the wind. Another touchback. And you look at the total yards in this game. Youngstown State 280, Robert Morris just 90 total yards. And yet still a two score game. So Robert Morris just trying to hang around until they can finally get something going on offense as the pass rush up front for the Penguins has been dominating the last few drives. Boy, and it just, it seems like even that number for Youngstown State on offense is low because of how long their, their offense has been on the field. Absolutely, I mean, you know, penalties have really killed them on offense. They get down in the red zone and get pushed back and have to settle for three instead of scoring touchdowns. Robert Morris will try to get back in it now. Reggie Green, the man in motion back and forth there. And Harrison Dreyer pulled down behind the line of scrimmage on an outstanding play by Avery Larkin. Avery Larkin, another guy who, as he's moved in you know, to a more upperclassman role, getting more playing time, and a tremendous job coming off the edge there on that nickel blitz as he plays that nickel back position, which is such an important position for this defense. Carl Pellini says it's linebacker and safety all mixed together. You have to be able to play the run, but also you know, get back in pass defense as well, and Avery does it very well. He's got man coverage on the slot receiver to the right at the moment. Williams steps up in the pocket, which breaks down, and the guy who was holding things together for the Penguins was Wesley Thompson, and he's going to get credit for a half a sack there, I think, or a tackle for loss anyway. Loss of a yard to the 22 will bring up third and 13. Yeah, that's going to be the second tackle for loss for Wes Thompson today, the freshman from Boardman, Ohio, who has been a surprise, as we mentioned, throughout the first two games. Good to see a young player like that stepping up and making plays. Well, this is how you build depth. As we joked off the air briefly, Dre, Coach Tressel, Jim Tressel, during his time leading the Penguins to four national championships, used to say, you got to have a pair and a spare. Walker eludes the rush, finds a tight end underneath. This will be a first down and then some. Good job by Jimmy Walker, and he bought enough time to get the ball to Taven Allison for the first down. And coming in on the rush hard was Justice Reed, but he didn't get credit for a sack that time. Yeah, you got to give Walker credit. He's done a good job today. He's been under fire, you know, most of the drives he's been out there, but yet he's been able to sneak away a couple times. He's got good elusiveness and able to keep his head, you know, downfield and make a play to convert a third down. So, you know, Walker showing some toughness, hanging in there and making plays with guys draped all over him. 18-yard pickup out of a straight-eye formation. Dreyer made the mistake of waiting for a block. There wasn't going to be one, and he was pulled down by Cash Mitchell, sophomore linebacker. And you mentioned the depth, Jim, that this team is building, and that's something Carl Pellini said. He said he thinks that this team has a chance to even be better this year on defense than even last year. And that's saying a lot with how dominant they were a year ago on defense, but it's because of the depth. You know, he feels like they can go you know, two, three deep at most positions where that wasn't something they felt comfortable with the last few years. And Cash Mitchell's a guy that's added that depth at linebacker, a young, talented guy. So on second and 10, Ricky, will, uh, Jimmy Walker goes deep and catch is made on the far side. Taven Allison pulling it in. Matched up out there with the freshman Bryce Gibson and you, know, you really can't fault Gibson too much. This is pretty good coverage that he's got on Allison, but a tremendous ball by Walker again. Getting hit as he throws, hangs in the pocket, a little bit of a back shoulder throw, just puts it right where Allison can make a play. And that's good coverage, just a better throw and catch. Down to the Youngstown State 28-yard line, 32-yard pickup on the pass play. Harrison Dreyer cut down in the backfield. Cash Mitchell, Mitchell again. Cash Mitchell flying up from his linebacker position. He shows you right there the speed that he has. You know, he's a physical guy that'll come up and hit hard in the run game, but showing the speed right there to run from sideline to sideline and make a play in the backfield. No gain, second and 10 coming up for the Colonials. At the YSU 28, we're approaching the one minute mark of the third quarter. Colonials trying to avoid a shutout. 
Lost here 38 to six last year. Throw underneath. That is going to be complete again to Allison. I think they're actually marking that one incomplete. Or are they going to say it to bounced see. it? Yeah, I think they yep, said it bounced. Incomplete. It was a good ball again. Walker was you know, under heat again as Justice Reed just lit him up as he came into the you know, off the edge on a pass rush. Walker hung in there, made the throw, but Nico Hurst, you see right there, number 17, with good coverage to force the incompletion. Well, Robert Morris arrives at the moment of truth again. Third and 10. Trips right. They shift the tight end. Green to the right. They send Allison in motion to the left out of that trips. And now we will get a timeout called by YSU as they did not like the looks of the formation Robert Morris wound up in after both tight ends motioned. So it'll still be third and 10 with under a minute to play now in the third quarter. Robert Morris trying to salvage this drive, keep it alive, turn it into some points for the first time on the afternoon. They have had one scoring opportunity turned away, missed a field goal, moving this direction. Now you see the head coach of the Colonials, John Banasek, former Super Bowl champion with the Pittsburgh Steelers back in his playing days. And He's been at Robert Morris for a long time. He's been with the program for 14 years. This is his fourth year as the head coach. Spent 11 years as an assistant with the Colonials. So was that whole time under Joe Walt? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, he's been here for a so long it's, time. So it's kind of been a Steelers connection in the big <laughs> chair since uh -huh. the program started because Robert Morris uh, did not always compete at this level. Mm -hmm. They do not fund a full complement of scholarships. They are considered an FCS program, however. Remember when the, when the program first started and somebody asked Joe over in Pittsburgh, asked Joe Walton, how come you don't play, you know, a non-conference game against somebody close like Youngstown State? He says, because Youngstown State could name the score. <laughs> that pass falls incomplete. It'll be fourth and 10. And again, Billy Nico Hurst had really nice coverage and screened the receiver very well. Yeah, but you have to give Robert Morris credit and, and they should be you know, proud of themselves the last few years coming in here. You know, they got beat up pretty good 38-6 last year, but two years ago forced overtime and, you know, a two-score game here today. And, and this is a program that, you know, is going to come in with a lot of pride. You know, they're they're not going to come in and get pushed around easily, and they've shown that again here today. 46-yard field goal attempt, and this one has popped up. This has no chance. That was barely 30 yards. And so for the second time today, a very poor kick from their placement guy, Nick Maseglia. And the way that kick fell, it looked like a Penguin could have got a hand on it because you know, that ball really just never even got close to the goal post. So you got to think maybe there was a finger that you know, got the ball tipped, created it to fall short. But you know, that's tough for Robert Morris because that's a drive where you're moving the football, you get a couple big pass plays, you get deep into YSU territory, and you feel like, okay, if we score here, make it a one-score game, or at least get some points on the board, you know, we still have a chance to, to hang around and make this a game. But you know, that really deflates you as you come away with no points after what looked like a promising drive. Yeah, part of the problem there was on those the last two down series, first down was a no game, so they started in the hole. Good throw, nice scoop up. Alvin Bailey with the completion out at the 44. Alvin Bailey again showing that body control and the ability to make a play on a pass that might not be perfect. You know, Mays there didn't lead him, kind of you know made him come back to the football. But Bailey's so good at adjusting on the run and coming back to the ball and making sure he makes the catch. And boy, Alvin Bailey looks poised to have a big year. You know, he's really become such a reliable target. You know, he's been big here today. 16-yard pickup. Under 20 seconds to play in the third quarter. Bailey now with four catches for 60 yards. Christian Turner is in the backfield. Possible audible here from Nathan Mays. Takes the snap, gives it to Turner. Turner quickly to the corner and steps out of bounds at the 45. Yeah. And that is the final play of the third quarter. Only three points have gone up on the board since halftime. It means that the score going to the final quarter is Youngstown State 16, Robert Morris nothing. 
Youngstown State starts the fourth quarter with a 16-point lead and a second and eight at its own 46-yard line. Double slot formation. Kevin Tevin McCaster back in the backfield for the Penguins. Fake to him. Good pocket. Now as it breaks down, Mays lurches forward to midfield. It will bring up a third down and five for Robert Morris fans. Your opponent next week, Virginia Military, has rallied back to tie Catawba at 20 with five minutes to play. Mentioned Robert Morris with their first win over Dayton since 2000 last week. I know that felt good for the Colonials. They won on the last second field goal. Their first season opening win since 2008. Mays. Look at the time. It's going to break free, though. He'll have the first down and run it out of bounds. Could be a flag. I thought he was tackled out of bounds, but there is no laundry in the air. And I think Nate Mays has given YSU fans a glimpse into you know, what he brings to the table. With Hunter Wells out due to injury, you know, showing some ability running the football when things break down. He's throwing the ball well. He's 8 of 12 for 91 yards through the air, and he's now carried it five times for over 40 yards. So you know, he does bring that dual threat. 15-yard pickup, alone in the backfield. Tevin McCaster gets the football, tries the left edge for two or three yards, bring up second and about seven. Impressed with the way Robert Morris has played those stretch plays to the outside. And they've done a great job stringing the play out, setting the edge, you know, not letting too many runs around the corner. And you know, one positive for Robert Morris, if you look forward, this defense I think has has shown some glimpses that they can be pretty good. You know, I think that. In the Northeast Conference, as they move along their season, this could be you know, one of the better defenses in the conference. And that's been the hallmark under John Banasek. They've played good defense in his four years as head coach. Nathan Mays parking out an audible after looking to the bench. Play clock, plenty of time left. Gonna throw underneath, over the middle. Got his tight end, Shane Kuhn. Down to the 22, and a Penguins first down. There we see Kuhn getting some love in the pass game. We talked about you know, how he handles the fullback duties and does a lot of the dirty work in the run game, but nice to see him get some love in the pass game, get a catch. And you know, Shane's a kid who's a senior, and you know, he's one of the leaders of this team. Been around a long time, seen a lot of different football. He's been through a lot of different situations, and he's a guy that a lot of the younger guys on this team lean on. Extra lineman here, Amir Fenwick, checks in for Robert Morris, replacing linebacker Tyler Lamica. A caster right up the middle for YSU, down to the 15. If you're the Penguins coaching staff, I think you want to see, you know, let, let's get in the end zone and finish this thing off. You know, we've Kind of sputtered a little bit, had some nice drives, but had some stuff hold us back where we got to kick field goals. Let's not mess around. Let's run the football, you know, impose our will, get into the end zone and put this thing away, you know, so we can try and stay healthy before next week. Shane Kuhn in at fullback. He will block. The caster goes off to the right and slides down inside the five. It'll be first and goal. Kevin McCaster's carried the load today. In the run game, we've seen Christian Turner in there as well, but McCaster has really been the guy that's got the bulk of the carries, 20 yards, 69 yards, 20 carries, 69 yards, I should say, and about a three-and-a-half-yard average. So this is what you expect from Tevin. First and goal from the eight. McCaster, again, spins out of a tackle and leans forward down to the four. See that second effort is... It's never the first guy that seems to bring Tevin down as he's able to spin out, you know, break a tackle, and get those extra yards that, you know, when you play in these football games, those extra two, three yards, those, you know, that, that can help you get him better down in distance make such a difference. They mark it at the five, so it will be second and goal from there after a three-yard pickup. I believe they have checked Christian Turner in as a wideout. He's in the slot on the left. Yep. 
It's interesting. You run the football, then you get down to the five-yard line. You go empty back. And so will Turner in motion and fake it to him. Mays labs it into the end zone. Wow. Leaping catch. Touchdown, Kevin Rader. <laughs> Good throw over a leaping defender as well. Got to look at the athleticism and, you know, the special talent that Kevin Rader is. What a catch. I mean, that's a play that most guys aren't going to be able to make. You know, you just kind of lob it up, let him make a play as Mays just put it in an area where he can go get a, get a hand on it and, that's just an athletic play by an athletic tight end, and you know, he expects to be a big part of this offense this year. He's been a little quiet here today, but it's in the scoring column there. Well, there was a lot going on on that play for the defense to try to keep track of, so it's, it's not really a secret why Raider had a chance to make a catch, but there was a defender in great position, and Mays just made a really good throw. Zach Kennedy drills another one through, and this time the Penguins finish the job in the red zone, and they have now increased their lead to 23 to nothing. Wait up. Well, Youngstown State goes 72 yards in 10 plays, used four minutes and 57 seconds, and a nifty flip from Nathan Mays to Kevin Rader from five yards out produces the score. That huge battle of FCS powers, North Dakota State and Eastern Washington is nearing the midpoint of the first quarter. Eastern Washington, the home team, and leading seven to three. Zach Kennedy hangs this one up short, taken at the 10. Wow, quite an escape back there by the redshirt freshman who is having himself a heck of a day, Harrison Dreyer. And we talked about you know, the promising defense, I think, moving forward for Robert Morris. But how about this kid? I mean, you got to be excited what you're seeing from this young man. And it's going to be a bright future as the season moves along for the Colonials with their talented young tailback who, you know, his escapability and elusiveness is, you know, very impressive. Like, going up against, you know, an FCS opponent here today, a good FCS opponent in Youngstown State. So, you know, some things that I think John Benesek can take away from this game, even though it's not going their way. We're going to get a block in the back against Robert Morris. So even when things go well. You know, Jim, I think we should point out, too, that We've had a couple great shots by our, our camera people today who have done such a great job that, of the student section. and you know, A lot of students came out here today for Youngstown State, and I know the administration has to be happy to see that as you see a lot of them still here. And you know, It's been such an improvement of the on-campus environment here at Youngstown State. President Jim Trussell doing such a wonderful job leading this university. and you know, It's been a good game day environment here today, so credit to the students for coming out. Ball back at the 13, Dreyer, again, good stop, start, and then good drive upfield out across the 20, picked up by 10, that's good enough for a first down. This is where Youngstown State, if you're, you know, Bo Pelini and your coaching staff, you don't want to see any let up here. Okay, you're up 23 nothing, 10 minutes to go, but you still need to execute. You know, this is where we still need to see you play your assignments, play your gaps, not make mistakes. And I think that's where he's trying to get this football team to get to now is lock in on every play. I think that's where he thinks there's still a lot of improvement to be made is there's play to play, being locked in and executing. Vern Robinson in motion, pulls up as the middle man and a three-man set on the left side. Penguins may be offside here. Could be a free play and a wide open Robinson. And Moon missed him, or uh, Walker rather, missed him by a ton, but I think YSU was offside. Yeah, Faison Chapman jumped off sides, and you know, that's the thing that I know Coach Pelini's gonna talk about in his post game is the penalties. You know, there's been a number of them today. Uh, I mean, it's it's only the sixth penalty, but they've just seemed to come at inopportune times. You know, now it's not gonna hurt you as much, but you know, as you move forward, as I mentioned, you know, they gotta clean up the penalties and, and be cleaner because those are the things that cost you football games, you know, as the schedule moves along. Well, you're at a point now with under 10 minutes to play where maybe you're thinking about, you know, we need to preserve the shutout, but you don't do that by looking at the zero and the 10 minutes on the scoreboard. You do it by paying attention to the next play. And this is a good play. Again, Harrison Dreyer, nice run to the 35. That should be good enough for the first down. Kyle Hedges in on the tackle. 
along with Johnson, Louis Jean, the DN. There's Hedges, who's really solidified himself as that starting strong safety. You know, Coach Pelini early in the season, I think, was trying to figure out who was going to be his full-time players in the secondary. And he said it's going to be an ongoing competition as the season moves along because they have four new starters in the secondary. Uh, but Hedges has played some good football throughout the first two games and I think really kind of solidified himself as that go-to strong safety. Low snap, Walker can't handle it. Dreyer tries to scoop it up and then finally goes back and falls on it. Back at the 25, so that'll be a 10-yard loss. You see here, it's a low snap. Walker not able to handle it, gets tipped up in the air. Hot potato, good job by Dreyer, able to corral it and get down, and preserve the possession. Because right now, if you're Robert Morris, you just want to you know, try and do what you can here and, and stay healthy as well because they got a long season ahead where they're going to get in conference play. You know, so I know John Banasek's got to be thinking, let's keep our main guys here intact because you know, it's, it's a long season. And, and you know, at the end of the game here in the proverbial garbage time, you, you don't want to lose somebody important. It's not garbage time to the guys who are out there. That's true. Oh, that's the thing. Very they, true. They have to play like it's prime time. Walker rushed again, almost got away. You could see him thinking about where a possible lane was, and by the time he made up his mind, it wasn't there anymore. Justice Reed closed in from behind and brought him down. Two and a half sacks on the day for Justice Reed to go along with five total tackles, three assisted tackles, two tackles for losses. He's been impressive today, you know, and I think that he's solidifying himself you know, as, as the end, it's going to be maybe the best pass rusher for this YSU team. And a penalty on YSU on that play. And get a defensive holding call. And it's again, penalties continue. Come with an automatic first down. Justice Reed, you know, he's a guy that, you know, came in in, in fall camp, and I think that once they got him into shape and, Got him up to game speed, familiar with his defense. Uh, they're starting to see what he can become. It is not a first down, but it makes it second and 10. And then Coach Pelini wants a timeout. And he's going to get it. So he's getting good execution some of the time when Robert Morris has the ball in play, but mental mistakes. So it's time to talk things over with 8.06 to play and Youngstown State leading Robert Morris 23 to nothing. When people think Belk, they think we're always welcoming, sweet and stylish. They say we enjoy the finer things in life, but still know how to have some fun. Well, it's all true. College mascots. When it comes to hyping up football fans, nobody does it better. But when it comes to mortgages, they're less confident. Fortunately, there's Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. It's simple, so they can understand the details and be sure they're getting the right mortgage. Apply simply, understand fully, mortgage confidently. Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans, proud supporter of college athletics. The team Robert Morris will face next week Virginia military is on the verge of losing to Division II Catawba, trailing 27-20 with less than a minute to play in their game this afternoon. Second and 10, Robert Morris from its own 35-yard line. Jimmy Walker. Dreyer gets the ball, bounces it outside, trying to use a blocker who ultimately gets in the way. The guy out front there was guard Alex Minford, who at 290 pounds does not quite have the foot speed or agility of Harrison Dreyer. Now we look ahead. You mentioned some of the games that these teams will be playing in the next couple weeks. Youngstown State has a massive matchup in a couple weeks. They'll have Central Connecticut State here next week, then a bye week, and then they'll be here at home against South Dakota State on September 30th, who's going to be one of the best teams in the FCS again this year. They got some NFL prospects on offense, so you know, a couple weeks down the pipeline, Youngstown State's got a big one here at Stanbaugh Stadium. Picked second in the preseason poll in the Missouri Valley Football Conference behind North Dakota State and right ahead of Youngstown State. Good throw, great hit, incomplete. Bryce Gibson came up 
and nailed Warren Robinson, who couldn't hang on. Bryce Gibson, we talked about him being a freshman and winning that job in fall camp, and he was impressive. You know, he beat out some older guys for that starting job at, the, at that corner position. And the reason he won that job is because he's physical. You know, he can cover, obviously, and play in pass defense, but you saw it right there. He is physical. He is never afraid to come up, make a big hit, play in the run game. Uh, he's a young man that they're really excited about, and you see why. He's a kid from Western Pennsylvania. That's right. Johnstown. YSU with 15 players from the state of Pennsylvania on their roster. It's been a fertile recruiting ground for Coach Pelini. Wow, this is a pretty punt. Jacob Coates at the 15. And he'll go down at the 23. He is a very dangerous returner. Penguins hope so anyway. Timeout on the field, 6.56 left to play. Youngstown State gets the ball, leading 23 to nothing. Not every rivalry is a fair fight. Like Wendy's beef with the other guys. While they thaw out, Wendy's goes all out. Serving fresh beef for nearly 50 years. Which is why true hamburger fans side with the official hamburger of the NCAA. Apparently, the picture is worth a thousand words. The award-winning 4K displays from Vizio. After a 47-yard punt and an 8-yard return, Youngstown State is set up at its own 23-yard line. And the Penguins have checked Christian Turner back into their offensive backfield. He flares out in the left flat, takes the ball at the 20, makes a nice cut out across the 30 to the 32. Just short of a first down, unless they get the little extra yardage. Nope. Penguins staying with their starters here late in this game, up 23 to nothing. And, you know, I think that's important because with a quarterback in Nate Mays, who not the starter going in, who looks like he might have to play here an extended you know, time over the next few weeks, it's going to be important to get as many reps and as many snaps as possible to be prepared for the coming weeks. Out of the eye, this is once again Christian Turner launches himself to the 35 for a first down. Robert Morris player losing his helmet. Devin DeFrancis, redshirt sophomore linebacker. Turner with another solid performance, the true freshman from Cincinnati after the big breakout game receiving last week. He's been solid on the ground today. 10 carries, 57 yards, about six yards a pop. So be excited about what you're seeing. He's going to get it again, being patient. Didn't get any yardage, but you know he's a he's a pretty mature guy as well. And, you know, there's a case where a you know at a lot of levels in a lot of cases you'll see a true freshman out ah, plays bottled up. I'm going to ad lib this thing. He just kept his hands on his offensive lineman. You know, took what he had. No sense in making a a bad choice or a bad mistake in a in a game that's in your back pocket. Young man that played in a bunch of state championship games. During his time at Cincinnati LaSalle, a big time program. And, you know, so the, the big moments and playing in the college game has not phased him one bit. Mays with a ton of time, throws it out in the flat, complete. Again, out to midfield, ball in the hands of Jeremiah Braswell, a sophomore out of Toledo Central Catholic with his first reception of the season. Nate Mays has been very poised today. You know, I thought that he's been very comfortable back there throwing the football. 11 of 15, 123 yards and a touchdown. So, you know, Nate looks like a guy that's prepared to, you know, to handle the job, you know, as long as Hunter Wells is out. Hope it's not long, but, you know, Mays looks ready to step up and take the job. 17-yard pickup and on a, not really a full delay, but a little bit of a pause before the handoff. Again, Turner does a nice job patiently using his blocks and driving down to the 40-yard line for an eight-yard pickup. Second and two, under four and a half minutes to play. Turner again. Oh, nice move all the way down to the 30 and then some. That was electric. You know, that's what we saw all throughout fall camp. 
throughout practice, it was those moves, the spin moves, the juke cuts. I mean, he's got some, some special stuff in that repertoire, and that's, that's one of them right there. That's, you just don't see that from every running back. You know, not everybody has that ability to have the instincts to spin and, and keep going. He's, there'll be some things that he'll continue to open some eyes with as the season moves along. 11-yard gain there, Youngstown State, first down at the Robert Morris, 29. See Chris Durkin lined up in that wing position there as a tight end, number 87. We saw him catch a pass earlier. I still think he's a guy that's going to break out and become a bigger part of this offense at some point. Turner again, head down, and this time a couple of Robert Morris defenders there to stop him, leading the way. Eyes on Pulley, true freshman, number 58. Talking to the YSU coaches and players this week in preparation for this game, they talked about what makes Robert Morris difficult to deal with on defense. They, they're kind of a junk defense. You know, they throw so many different fronts and looks. They line up in so many different formations that they really make it hard to kind of read pre-snap what you're doing. There's the fake to Turner. And a nice weaving run by Nathan Mays. But again, under the current circumstances, the coaches might have wished he had made a different choice. I think that'll be something that you hear Coach Pelini and Offensive coordinator Shane Montgomery mentioned this week is how they want him to, to be a little bit smarter, a little more wary of protecting himself when he runs, as I mentioned earlier, because you know, Nate's an aggressive kid. You know, he, he's, a, he's an aggressive, tough kid who wants to run and get extra yards, but you know, we need you on the field right now with that injury to our, to our first quarterback, Hunter Wells. So you know, maybe slide, get out of bounds, not the, not the worst idea. <laughs> Turner again, nice cutback, down to the 10 he goes. And you'll remember last year, that's something that they had to tell Ricky Davis. And Ricky Davis, who started the year as the quarterback for the Penguins a year ago, you know, that was something they really had to tell him because he was such you know, a football player. He wants contact, was never afraid of it, wanted to run the ball, but you know, he ended up getting hurt a lot. And it knocked him out of some games because he wasn't you know, a little smarter just to get down and you know, save his body. So I'm going to have to make sure Nate Mays learns that. Davis still with the program, now a wide receiver, but probably the Penguins' backup quarterback for a couple of weeks anyway. This time, Turner is met by a wall of white shirts near the 10-yard line, and that will bring up the third down. Making that play there for the Colonials. Coming up was Ryan Richards, Jr., and he's a guy who's played really well for Robert Morris the last couple weeks, and he had a fumble recovery last week, had five tackles, and done a good job today. He's made a lot of different plays as he has six tackles today as well. So he is a leader, a senior on that defense who's going to be one of their key guys you know, this season. All right, Penguins line up third and two at the 10. McCaster back in, toss, big lane, five, three, touchdown, Tevin McCaster on the toss. Big pile up right next to the lane that he went through, offensive lineman giving it up. Tevin McCaster and the Penguins. If we take a look at the replay, you see that wall in front of McCaster on the left side. Great job by Kevin Rader there, down blocking at his tight end position. That line getting great push and a beautifully designed run play to get McCaster behind a wall of blockers and push into the end zone. So, much as was the case last week in Pitt, although perhaps not in such dramatic fashion, the Penguins' second half performance in terms of physicality probably more impressive than the first half. Zach Kennedy, perfect again. And with less than a minute and a half to play in the ball game, the Penguins now lead Robert Morris 30 to nothing. You're right, the second half defensive performance has been great, you know, really on both sides of the ball, but defensively holding Robert Morris to only 147 total yards. They held to the Colonials to just 103 last year. So it's been tough sledding for the Robert Morris offense the last couple of years here at Stanbaugh Stadium. And this YSU defense, you know, as I mentioned earlier, Carl Pelini thinks that they can be possibly even better than last year. Yeah. It's more versatile. They have some different skill sets. Obviously don't have the same guys on the defensive line. You know, Moss and Rivers are once in a lifetime type guys, but there's a lot of talent, a lot of depth on this defense. So as they get more comfortable, as they get you know more in sync with each other, play more football together, I think that this unit could, again, be one of the best in the FCS. And again, you're seeing the athleticism of 
Youngstown State players on both sides of the football. There's it's a continuing upgrade now. Mm -hmm. There are players here of the type that might not have been here in the not too distant past. And it's certainly recruiting has gotten way more competitive at the FCS level. Absolutely. Short kickoff, Dreyer at the 12. Out across the 25 for what is likely Robert Morris's last possession, maybe the last possession of the ball game. Yeah, it's been tough sledding for Robert Morris throwing the football today. Jimmy Walker just 6 of 16 for 83 yards. Taven Allison, the leading receiver, two catches for 50 yards. And Harrison Dreher has been the main producer for them on offense with 19 carries and 84 yards. I don't know if that's a surprise to them. It is to us because we didn't expect to see him, certainly not in as prominent a role as he has taken almost from the get-go. There is a crunching tackle on uh, the guy who started the game at running back, T.J. Neal, and he is busted by Kyle Hedgetus. Hedgetus, a guy who tore his ACL early last year. They expected him to be a big contributor last year, but had that unfortunate ACL injury on a special teams play. And, you know, happy for him that he's back healthy and getting a chance to be a starter in that defensive backfield. And he's been all over the field today, and he was all over the field in the second half against Pitt last week. So. Coaching staff has to be excited about his future. One yard loss. This is Neal again, and he's going to get that loss back and maybe generously one more. TJ Neal, a guy who started the season as a defensive back for the Colonials, but they saw his athleticism in fall camp and throughout practice and said, you know what, we're going to move him to the backfield. And he had a decent week last week, 11 rushes for 57 yards against Dayton. So a versatile guy who's played both sides of the ball. Down to 45 seconds to play. We might have, looks like they might have an equipment issue. They're going to drag somebody off the field. And it is the running back, T.J. Neal. So it's either an equipment issue or he actually looks like he might be slightly groggy. So yeah. maybe they're just saying, hey, you know what, let's not take any chances late. Maybe he took a whack and there's some blood showing or something. You saw the official point to his eyes as if he was a little yeah. a little out of it. And you got to give the officials credit for, you know, that's something they're putting more on the officials is to notice those kinds of things. If you see somebody that looks like they might need to get looked at to point it out, so. Yeah, and in the final minute of a game, what sense does it make to say, eh, so what, there's only a minute left. Yeah, absolutely. Let's play it safe and make sure that right. we don't right. have something unfortunate happen. Cole Blake is his replacement. And will get the football. And he won't get anything. In fact, he'll lose a yard and coming up to make the play for the Penguins. Yeah, you know what? I'm not. Oh. Might have been Crispin Lee. Right. The junior corner from Penn Broke Pines, Florida. Crispin's been a big special teams player for this team the last few years, a backup role in the defensive backfield. I think that's going to do it. Yep, fourth and ten, and no point to do anything else. Youngstown State moves to one and one on the season, winning yet another home opener and keeping a couple of other big streaks alive against home team, home opener opponents and teams from Pennsylvania. Robert Morris drops to one and one. Next week, the Colonials will be at home against Virginia Military, which lost to Catawba today. And the Penguins will be at home to Central Connecticut State, which lost a high scoring affair, 38-31. That was at home to Fordham. So, I don't know. I got to think that the Colonials and the Penguins at home have to be favorites next week. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we talked about uh, causes to be encouraged for these two teams at the start of the broadcast. How do they leave with additional causes of encouragement? I think the Penguins have to be really excited about their defense. You know, they held them scoreless, really made a lot of plays in the pass rush, got some great plays from Justice Reed off the edge, and you're pretty dominant on defense. So you feel like the defense can get 
you know, where they were last year as a dominant group in the offense. Nate Mays did a good job coming in and playing, but you got to figure out where the health is of Hunter Wells. So there'll be some question marks on offense. And Robert Morris took some positives as well. Defense was talented at times today, made some plays. So, you know, it's a long season. I think there's things to be excited about for both teams. All right, that's the story from Stambaugh Stadium in Youngstown, Ohio this afternoon. Penguins next week, same time, same place, 2 o'clock here at Stambaugh Stadium against the Blue Devils of Central Connecticut State for Dre Smith and our entire crew here this afternoon. I'm Jim Campbell. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekend, fans.